Hitting live now. All right, and welcome to yet another LCA webinar with Rockstar Coach Felix, who is, uh, you know, has got a long history of coaching, leading, uh, converting online leads, and, um, you know, the title of this says it all, right? Like 50 million? <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. You're doing your thing. Um, and I really, uh, I know that I personally have a lot that I'm going to be able to learn from you. And I know that those listening are going to be able to. And I just thought maybe if you have, um, uh, you know, uh, some thoughts that you'd like to share and just get right into it, I want to turn it over to you. And uh, we're, we're eager, man. So pumped to listen. Cool. So today we're talking about uh, Facebook organic lead generation. And I, I want to I explain what that is for people that may not understand. So you see a lot of Facebook training that is around Facebook ads and, and Facebook business pages. Um, and the business page technically can be an, an organic strategy, just like Facebook uh, personal page and Facebook groups and things like that. But what I teach is, is all from the Facebook personal page. So you use your personal page to get most of your business, not your business page. And so that, that's really where I differ from a lot of different trainers out there. Yeah, and that actually makes a lot of sense because, um, you know, your sphere is not attracted necessarily to your business page, um, but they, they are liking and engaging your other posts. So I'm very interested to hear this angle because I actually think that you're spot on. I think there's a lot of value there. And so this is, this is basically since 2015 how I generated $50 million in referral business from my Facebook. And um, it's believed that it's usually your sphere, but actually it was, it was not mostly my sphere. It was really sometimes other agents and other marketplaces, and it also was um, strangers. So you can still use this strategy if you are comfortable, right? And that's usually what I get during the presentation is some people are not comfortable with some of the privacy settings. Um, but let, let's go into it. So, um, I have a presentation. Is it okay if I, if I broadcast my presentation? Yeah, absolutely, man. Share your screen. I'm excited about it. You just hit the share at the bottom should pull it up. It's like a green arrow. So it said, uh, Failed to start. Let me try again. Here we go. There it is. All right, so uh, just, just a little background about me so we're not strangers here. So this is my 16th year in business. I actually didn't start selling real estate in California. I started selling it in the D.C. metro area. So I'm from Northern Virginia originally. I did oh, nice. Franchise. I, I'm not going to say what franchise there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did own my own real estate franchise. I've, I've closed hundreds of deals between Virginia and California, over 50 that I've tracked alone on Facebook. And um, in 2017, I recruited 80 people just from my Facebook page. So if we have some managers out there, if we have, um, if we've got um, some broker owners out there that or team leaders that want to recruit. I, I did recruit over 80 people just from my Facebook. And this is, this is the personal page again and uh, generated 50 million since I started tracking, which was um, 2015. Man, so, that is impressive. Thanks brother. So I uh, just some, some um, people that don't think social media works. So let me go over a fact. Um, I, I did meet um, a trainer, which is now a friend of mine that did close over a hundred deals a year just from his Facebook using very similar strategies um, all organically. So, so didn't pay for anything, literally just Facebook organic lead generation. He actually closed over 300 deals. So I, I say a hundred, but I, I think it's, it's more uh, tangible for most people. He actually closed over 300 deals a year from his Facebook. Wow. So, doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are, but you, you must be relatable to the group of people that you're trying to relate to. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you speak a certain language. It doesn't matter if you have a certain religion. You, you can make this work. You just have to understand the rules of the game and, and how. 
So this slide is just basically to give uh, homage to Gary V. Um, his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, is basically about 70% of this presentation. And the funny part is, is I didn't read that book before I put this presentation together. So we, we came to the same conclusions after making probably very similar mistakes over a long period of time. And it also says that technology is moving at the speed of life. And I, I know that uh, you and Tristan um, and everyone else on, on Lab Code Agents always talks about, about the disruptor being technology. Mm -hmm. So in, in fact, I know this is a fact in, inside LCA. Most agents and teams, there, there are a lot of agents and teams that are generating 100% of their business online. So, so that, that is a fact, and that, I think that's easy for the group to really understand. But why aren't we getting the results? I think we're listening to wrong people. I think we're mm. listening to marketing companies that want your money. So they, they push the Facebook business page. They don't want to really uh, anger you. And so they always sell you on the fact that you can separate your personal life from your business life. Right? We hear that a lot. And it's, it's your non-techie real estate company trying to push something that hasn't really worked. So there's a lot of big brokerages out there teaching your Facebook business page. It, you can get it to work. It's just, I believe that it's a lot harder for an agent to go from zero to 10 transactions on a business page than it is from their personal page. The other part is you may not have enough friends and you may not be actually growing through your, your social media knowledge on a, a daily or weekly basis. So working out meaning you're, you're, you're trying and you're failing maybe 20 or 30 minutes each day. Hmm. But you're going to fall into one of these three categories. We don't have Generation Z as real estate agents as of yet. Maybe we do. Maybe a couple of Gen Z are getting their license at this point. But you must speak the language of who you're trying to touch. And I'm going to argue that um, although everyone talks about how millennials are going to be the biggest buying generation, um, they don't have usually the money yet. So you're going to see that when, when I talk about how I post on Facebook, I touch every single generation, every single time I post, I try to. Um, so these are the organic strategies that are out there or the strategies period on Facebook. So the, you have your personal page, you've got Facebook stories, and I'm going to recommend that people push a lot of the Facebook stories right now because Facebook is pushing that out there, right? So it's actually giving you more views than normal. So you should push your Facebook stories. Uh, your Facebook business page can, can be done organically or through Facebook ads and Facebook groups. Hmm. So uh, today we're probably going to touch on the personal page. We'll touch on stories and we'll probably touch on Facebook groups. Normally the questions will be about the business page and, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the business page that come up during the presentation too. But it's all about the personal page. It, it's about being authentic and genuine. And I, I had a, a top producer in my marketplace ask me one time, um, she had a millennial daughter and her millennial daughter wanted her to switch her personal page to a fan page because she reached 5,000 people. And I asked her this one question that struck her. I said, well, do you want, uh, I'm sorry, do, do your friends want to be a fan or a friend? Uh. And that instantly told her not to switch her maxed out personal page into a fan page. That's deep, man. <laughs> Even though she said, well, well, the challenge is that more people want to add me and connect with me. And I said, well, they can either just follow you. You know, I, I know people with over 100,000 followers on Facebook also, right? So I, right now, I think I have maybe 1,300 followers, and then I'm pretty maxed out on my Facebook personally also. But she, she started a second Facebook page, and she maxed out on that, I think, in a couple of months also. So Dang. Influence on Facebook is, is easily over 10,000 people or a small town. But it's important to realize that people want to be your friend and that's why they connect with you. They don't want to be a fan. And it's the same thing about the business page. It, it's not very personal. And, and that's why we have to go back to Sales 101. Sales 101 says that they have to like and trust you and maybe they'll use you for business. Well, how do you get them to like and trust you? Building rapport and you build rapport through the personal post and the personal page. So I, I really relate that to uh, my analogy. My analogy is primetime TV shows and commercials. So Barry, do you watch some TV shows? Yes, more than I care to admit. <laughs> so not 
we're, we're not talking about like Game of Thrones, which is on um, a premium channel, but non-premium channels, every 10 to 15 minutes, something happens, right? That's right. Commercials come up. And so my question to you, Barry, is do you watch for the TV show or the commercial? Definitely the TV show. Okay, perfect. I'm, I'm glad you're in a grant. There's going to be some knuckleheads that say the commercials out there, but <laughs> people watch for the TV show. Well, what That's we right. understand is that our personal life is a primetime TV show. Our friends, our sphere of influence, even strangers, they connect with us to get to know us better on a personal level. It's not so that you can just add your friends and spam them. And I want to make that clear also. On the other side, every single time you talk about your business, whether it's directly or indirectly, or you make a side joke, it is a commercial. Every mm -hmm. single time. Every single time. But we don't understand that and we don't see that because we're in real filter mode and not consumer mode. Mm -hmm. So let me put you guys in consumer mode real quick. When you see your friends talking about their businesses and, and their insurance brokers, they, they are in a network marketing company, how do you feel? How do you feel when they market to you on social media? Well, guess what? They feel the exact same way when you market to them on social media. And we have to fix that. And we can fix that if you choose to do it my way, right? So here, here's some TV shows, right? We, we, we've already said that we are not watching for the commercials, right? So make sure that you're giving your audience what they want, which is your personal life. That is the primetime TV show that they are tuning in to watch on your social media, not about your business. So I, I find it funny when a lot of um, agents, they, uh, they, just, they just talk about their business all day long on, on their personal Facebook even. Yeah, it just doesn't work, honestly. I mean, and I... Um a lot of this is resonating with me. I, I never thought about it uh, from a science perspective, but you know, this is, I think this is why people are trying to use social media and it's having the opposite effect and they're blaming Facebook when really it's just what they're displaying on Facebook. It's not attracting anybody. It's not endearing. Um, you know, and so this is, this is really, really good stuff. We do have one question. That's why I, just real quick, as far as your personal page, you talked about the one individual who grew it to 5,000. Um, do you just accept friend requests from anyone? Uh, was one user's or one, one watcher's uh, question. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. So um, they have to fall in a certain category. And, and if you're taking notes here, you want to write this down. So I don't have more than 20% of my friends as industry people. So 20%. So if let's say you, you have an aspiration to get to 5,000, which I believe everyone should eventually. Yeah. You have a thousand people that are inside the industry. So who should be inside the industry? So influencers that you follow that you like to get training from. So maybe some lab coat influencers, maybe some local top producers in your marketplace. Um, so, so the top listing agents, the top buyers agents, because if you're a listing agent, you're going to want to push your marketing out there to the top buyers agents in the marketplace. And if you are a top buyer's agent and you're trying to get your offer accepted, you want to have most of the top listing agents there. Uh, now, where it's, it comes into sort of the gray area is affiliates. Mm. Unless the affiliates like and comment on my social media, I normally don't add them or I won't keep them on there for a very long time because the algorithm is such that when you get a like or you get a comment or you get a share, you get that post bumped in Facebook is very so normally when you're my friend on Facebook what you normally say is wow Felix like I see your stuff everywhere all the time and I saw that one post six times this week because of the algorithm because people liked it so much or they commented and it got it kept getting bumped up to the top of the newsfeed by Facebook so that is really the secret of the strategy um, so normally they have to be someone who I believe I'm learning from so I, I have people in the real estate industry non real estate agents that, that are maybe training professionals that I follow. I have people inside the industry, uh, top buyers, agents, top listing agents, top teams, broker owners. Mine is going to look differently because I'm, I'm a coach. I run a team and I'm, I'm not really in production anymore. So my, my uh, makeup is going to be different. 
So if you're a recruiter, for example, if you own a brokerage, you're going to mostly have agents and you're going to have agents uh, no matter if they're probably producing or not. So you're just going to have a whole lot of local agents as your makeup, right? But the makeup that I just described is normally a normal agent. A normal agent is going to have, does, is not going to want the majority of their friends on Facebook to be industry people. So no more than 20% for the normal producer. Now, if you're a trainer, if you're a manager, if you're a team leader, that may look different. So hopefully that I answer. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think that answers it. Actually, that was insightful for me because I have trouble with that sometimes as well. <laughs> and, and I do go through unfriending sessions because I, I do get close to 5,000 friends. And, and just like uh, you and other influencers in LCA, you know, I speak a lot. So as I meet new people that are interesting that I want to connect with, I do unfriend people. And normally they get unfriended because they haven't liked or commented uh, on something in a while because it, yeah. it's not being my, me push my message on Facebook. So those are who I will unfriend. I don't actually unfriend real friends that I've actually met in real life and I, I hang out with, but I, I unfriend people that maybe I added and we've never actually met in person and they don't like my stuff. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. So that helps me to turn my message over and over again. Um, and so I'll, I'll make the point now. I think I'm going to make it later in the presentation, but you are in the business of chasing likes. The likes mm. and the comments, likes make you seem more popular. The comments really help, I think, equal, if not sometimes greater in bumping you back up. But likes and comments is what it's about. So you must be in the business chasing likes. At the same note, there are some fake trainers out there that don't get any likes on their posts and they say they're experts. How you can tell if someone is really good at Facebook organic lead generation is if they get the likes on their stuff, period. If they don't, they don't know what they're doing because even though they may be able to memorize even this presentation and regurgitate it, if their personal Facebook doesn't reflect a lot of light, then it, it's not effective. It's not helping with the Facebook algorithm. Okay, so it, it is your name TV. It is UTV, Barry Jenkins TV. So if I was tuning in, Barry, to your personal page on your Facebook, what am I seeing? Am I seeing the husband, right. the father? Am I seeing the real estate agent? The, the broker owner, the, the team leader, what am I seeing on there? And, and what you want to make sure is because you, you basically own your own TV channel, you want to have different TV shows on that TV channel. You know, social media is the new reality TV. So this is where we see you for our reality TV. Yeah, this, guys, if you're, if you're listening, sorry to interrupt again, but this is really, really deep stuff because – it really is getting inside the head of the consumer and the way, whether they realize it or not, the way they're viewing us. So, sorry, I keep interrupting because I'm excited, but keep going. <laughs> I, I just heard kids in the background too. So, um, you can't just have all of the, the TV shows about business. It can't right. be flip and it, it can't be about a day in the life of a realtor and it can't be about representing buyers and sellers all the time. It's got to be a mix on your 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 TV channel. I recommend at least three or four different genres, three different touches. And so um, I'll, I'll tell you mine from last year. Last year, I, I was working out seven days a week. So it was uh, the fitness channel. So Felix had a fitness, fitness show that was on a couple of times a week. Yep. And I, I'm a foodie. So I, I love hole in the wall places and I love fine dining. So you saw some phenomenal food. So you saw a foodie channel also inside my, my personal Facebook. You also saw, uh, you know, some, pe some people call me like the Asian Gary V or the Asian Tony Robbins. So you saw some, some motivational educational content that can apply towards anybody. And then you saw the real estate coaching stuff that was maybe a fourth channel that sort of blended in the, the third show and the fourth show. So, so that was how mine was, was made up of. And by doing this, you can, you know, I, I have a, a coaching client that, that made her name in, uh, she's a little league mom. And so she basically does Facebook live on little league stuff and she does uh, a lot of gardening. So she has another show that's basically about, um, succulents. And I didn't know what a succulent was before she told me what it was last year. Yeah. So, so she's making her brand from those things. And let, let me make that clear. Also, this is about branding. This is not about doing this, a magical Facebook post about business today and getting a lead tomorrow. You may, but this is a six to 12 month strategy. 
This is, this, this is just like farming, except it's free and more powerful. Instead of getting into their mailboxes every day, which they may or may not read, you are getting in front of their faces. So what is on your personal TV show right now? That, that's what you want to think about. How would people describe your show? Right? And, and I want to go over the 80-20 rule. So 80-20 rule says that 80% of your posts need to be about your personal life. Just, just think about the old uh, TV shows. Like, like I know I just played Lost. Lost was a one-hour show. And we know from Netflix and Hulu that in one-hour broadcasted show is normally about 40 to 46 minutes of content, about 80-20, approximately. So 80% of your posts needs to be what the consumer wants. And 20% of the time, you can spam them. And let me go back to that statement. Everything you do is spam. Just hopefully it's grade A spam and not C, D, or F spam, right? So everything you do when you mention business, directly or indirectly, is spamming your audience, period. We're hypersensitive about being marketed to, so all of it's spam, okay? The other rule I have, which I don't really share out there, is that you don't post two business posts in a row. If you post two business posts in a row, it's, it's too salesy, too spammy, and what's, what is going to happen is it's going to cannibalize your first business post. So if you have a new listing and you have a just listed, and then an hour later you post about the open house for that just listed, you basically just ruined your marketing for both posts. And so there is actually some, some algorithms, not proven, this is my personal opinion, but if you, if you look at how many likes you get, let's say you get 100 likes, the actual eyeballs on that post is probably 500 to 1,000 actual eyeballs on that post. And that's why, again, we go back to, you are in the business of chasing likes. The more likes you get, the more powerful your marketing is. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely found that uh, that's the case. People are just destroying their, their reach by overposting about one subject. I don't want to watch just one channel all the time. I want to watch multiple shows, and um, it, that's more interesting. Um, and actually, that's how... That's why you and I are friends on Facebook because I actually found you interesting. <laughs> so. <laughs> so make sure you're not posting two business posts in a row. That, that's, that's a rule of thumb that I have also. Um, so what posts get the most engagement? You know, when I put this course together in 2015, I've been teaching this same exact course since 2015. It was because I was in management at a large big box brokerage and there were vendors coming in and trying to teach social media and I didn't agree with what they were teaching. Why did I not agree with what they were teaching? Well, it was because it, it went against psychology. And I, I need you guys to understand this. Everything we do on social media is psychology. But the reason why I wasn't getting the results, I, I'm, I'm a old millennial or, or a young Gen Xer. And I was, I've been on Facebook since 2006 or 2007 when it was invented. But why was I not successful even though I fall into that age category? It was because my opinion was greater than what, what, what the general public was actually doing. So I, I want you guys to really realize this. This is not just social media, but any marketing that you do, your opinion does not matter. My opinion does not matter. It's how the masses will respond. Do you want 80% of the population to respond to your post or to your mailer or to whatever else you're putting out there in the marketplace? Or do you want the 20% to respond? So we must stop having our personal opinion affect our success. And so when I put this course together, I looked at what was getting likes. There's always a reason why someone gets a lot of likes. Okay, it, it actually could be because they're very attractive. It actually could be because they're very endearing. It could be because they're genuine. Unfortunately, we can't all be attractive, right? Sorry, Barry, I think we look pretty average. Right? Yeah, I mean, look, I was gonna say, man, you don't have to worry about that problem, but I didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, the most engaging posts are about, they're about life. They're about life. It's not about a magical business post. And this is my friend, and, and he may be even watching this broadcast because uh, he, just, he just became a, a KW, team, or not, KW um, productivity coach in our marketplace here. So I'm going to give a shout out to Kier McGlory. He's in, now he's in Tustin, California. But he was an agent in one of the companies that I managed for. And this is the birth of his daughter back in uh, 2016. And on this day, he, uh, he generated four clients from this post. Four clients, not leads, four clients from this post. And if you look at the bottom, 
he had 460 likes or 23 to uh, 4,600 people actually saw this post turn across their Facebook. And so why did he get four clients this day? Let me, let me describe to you the show that was on his personal Facebook page. He first, he came to my, my training, just like this training, he came to it at least 20 times, at least 20 times. Every time I trained on it, he said, well, I heard it differently. I learned something new. And he came repeatedly, not just once or twice. Okay. But this was maybe nine months into him doing this Facebook strategy. And wow. he basically documented his wife's uh, monthly visits to the doctor. So she was pregnant, they got pregnant, so he announced her pregnancy, and then every single month, he had either a Facebook Live or a post about the doctor's visit and how it went. So by the time the birth happened nine months later, people loved the show, and they were willing to give something back because they loved the show, which was, hey, now that you're a new dad, I know you need to make some more income, I'd like to be a patron of your business. And it, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to give birth to a child to make this happen. This is just about life events, just like this. Okay, so this is me posting like a, a millennial. And <laughs> people love the food. Now there is a, a demog age demographic that hates the food and it's my, my baby boomers. They tell me at all my presentations, Felix, I don't care what you ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know? <laughs> so good. But, but what it, it, get, it gets likes. And if it gets likes, if you're, you have to test this out also, if you're, if your friends and family and, and the strangers that you allow to be friends on Facebook, if they give you likes, then you should keep doing it. And I'll, I'll give you some parameters there also. So uh, people start thinking that you're a big deal and you're famous on Facebook at 100 plus likes when you do that consistently for almost all your posts. If you get 100 sometimes, once a month, it, you're, you're not in that category yet. Okay. And, and normally when I see consistent lead flow from the branding that I'm teaching in my class, it's you're getting 50 plus likes on all of your posts. When I started in 2015, I started a brand new Facebook page because I wanted to test what I was, what I was preaching. So this is my brand new Facebook page. If you look on Facebook, I actually have two profiles. And if you actually want to take two hours and scroll back to 2015, you're going to see that there was a time that I actually celebrated 20 likes. It was a big deal at the time because on my, my prior Facebook page, I actually probably didn't get more, more than 30 or 35 likes. So how did that work? Well, you must first understand what your true average is. So take the last two months of post. And if you have 19 posts in the last two months, you add all of the likes together, you divide by 19, you have an average. Then every single week, you need to try to get push above that average in that ceiling. So let's say your average is 30. Well, maybe this next week you're pushing to 35 or 40 as an average for your, your personal posts. Okay. And you're always going to get more likes for your personal posts. That's just how it is. So normally I train my, my coaching clients that if you're, you're getting a good post out there, it's, it's going to be a, a matter of making sure that you get 10% engagement on your personal post. So remember the primetime TV, Barry? Yes. If you about your wife and your kids and you have a, a thousand friends, you should be able to get at least a hundred likes or more. Mm. If this is a business post and you do it the way I teach you to do it, you should at least be able to get 50 or 5% likes on a business mm -hmm. post. And so if you're not reaching that threshold, your stuff sucks and you can have improvement period. I, I'm not, I don't sugarcoat it because yeah, no, I get it is they'll tell me, can you go to my personal Facebook and you tell, can you tell me if it's a good post? No, 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 I don't need to. Your audience will tell you if it's a good post based upon the, the, basically the percentage. If you're not getting 10% on your personal post and you're not getting 5% on your business post, you need to improve. And so what areas can you improve? Well, it can be the photo. So the photo, as we know from Instagram, the photo can carry the post. The photo can 100% carry the post. Also, the, uh, the copy can carry the post. So on the left there, you see from January 11th, this is from, I forget when, but this is talking about how I wasn't humble in my career because my first year I sold 16 houses and then 25, 32, 38, 45. And then my best year was, uh, was 58 houses, but I wasn't humble. And that's why I didn't reach hundred houses a year, even though I, I know more than my friends, that sell 100 and 200 houses a year, I, I wasn't humble when I sold 50. So 
So God didn't let me sell 100 or 200. So this was maybe 1,200 words. And so wow. the, the copy of this post carried the post. The copy carried the post. So what's magical is if you do both, if you have a phenomenal picture and you have phenomenal copy, then you can have a post that's going to get a lot of likes. The first time I posted this, it got 108. I actually posted the same exact post two years later and it got over 360 likes. Wow. Yeah, so I, no one actually knew. I actually recycled the post from two years earlier. I, I, got that, that, um, I got that memory refresher from Facebook that said you posted this two years ago. And yeah. the mistake you make is they, they share that post. And if you share that post, you'll get like five likes. What I actually right. did, I literally just downloaded the picture again because I didn't have it. And I copied the whole original post and I posted as an original post again. And that's the mistake people make when they get those memories from a year or two years ago. They'll post, they'll share what Facebook told them to share instead of reposting the original post. Right? It's the same thing. Um, I... I don't like people spamming their business page, not because I'm against the business page, but because when you share from your business page, you cut down on the likes. Mm -hmm. Same thing if you're pushing from other social media platforms like Twitter, like Instagram. Even though Instagram is owned by Facebook, we must understand before 2013, they were separate companies. They have separate infrastructure. They have separate servers that they still operate on. They're not on the same, they don't speak the same language. So Facebook still believes that Instagram is, is an invader, an outside invader. And just like other platforms, Facebook, how does Facebook make money? We must understand how Facebook makes money through marketing and advertising. They don't want you to leave Facebook. So when you put your personal website link into a post, they won't share it to 100% of your friends. They don't want you to leave that platform. Even if it's their little brother, Instagram, they don't want you to go to Instagram. So when you push from Instagram, Auto post from Instagram, you're actually going to get less likes than if you post the exact same thing twice, again, organically, again, from on the Facebook. And I've tested this out a lot. Okay, so you can also have your inspirational and motivational post if you're that person, right? But if you're a negative person, I, 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 I'm going to caution you against this because either, one, your friends are going to think you found God yesterday, or two, they're going to think you joined a network marketing company, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're not that person don't don't wake up tomorrow and start posting inspirational posts right, right? right. you're gonna think something's wrong with you <laughs> so good but you must be a storyteller so if you were to scroll down Barry on your personal Facebook page right now on your newsfeed I bet you that in 20 or 30 posts you may not find a story unless you find something that I wrote most of the stuff that you see I, I want everyone who's who's watching uh, either on LCA live or or on this broadcast right now, pull up your cell phone or pull up your personal news feed right now. And look, I bet you that most of the stuff that you see is a broken statement. It's a statement because that's, yeah. how, that's how Facebook, that's how Friendster, that's how MySpace, that's how millennials have taught us to post. Now, that I'm supposed to post at this restaurant having lunch, but that's not a story. It's not a story. We must be storytellers. And so, and so you saw a lot of influencers the last two and three years do long form posts, even on their Facebook ads. And I'm going to, I'm going to take credit for that because I've done a lot of these presentations and normally, you know, two and three years ago, we saw that big blob, right? It was a big, huge paragraph of material. Well, something happened the last two years. Well, they started breaking up and paragraphing their posts on Facebook. I taught that in 2015 that it's overwhelming to have one large paragraph on Facebook, you must break it up. And so I also did that because I would basically have a headline or a, 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 a catcher. And that, that, that headline or story catcher was millennials. And my millennials will own the first two lines. So the first one or two lines, my headline was literally just for my millennials or just as a headline, just like a news story. And then I actually would paragraph every four to six lines underneath it to make it easier to read and easier to skim and scan. And so it, this is just like when we used to buy the newspaper for the headline article or buy a, um, a magazine for the headline article. We would, we would normally read that one article, but if we got bored, we'd read the rest of it. And so that's what happens on our personal Facebook. They may be friends with us and 
Although most of the analytical people right now and the haters are going to say right now, Felix, I wouldn't read 1200 words. No, yes, you would. If you actually cared about me and you, you got to see what I was doing, you would, you would, you would read it. And so I'm going to argue against that all the time. Yes, you, you, you just bought the uh, New York Times one time, but maybe you, you got so much content and value out of it. Maybe you, you wanted a subscription to it. So yes, I do push to my personal clients to write 50, 100, 200, 300 word posts. And yes, it does uh, relate. And let me, let me give you an example. Cause right now I bet you on a Facebook live through the LCA group, I'm getting a lot of people that disagree with me. Felix, I would never read 500 words. I would never read 200 words. It always happens in every single presentation. Let me tell you, my mom is 13 years in remission and a breast cancer survivor. So let me, let me give you an example. My mom is 13 years remission as a, and is a breast cancer survivor. That's going to give me a lot of, of likes on Facebook. Would you agree, Barry? Oh, totally. Yeah. Let me tell you the real story. In 2005, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it hit the family really hard. I had to put my real estate career on hold. I had to get a nine to five job so that I was able to go to, to her oncology appointments with her. She was scared. She thought she was going to die and she wanted to die. So I had to cheer her up every single day by watching um, Taiwanese dramas that were, were cheerful or had a happy ending or, or humorous uh, TV shows that made her laugh. And by the way, because she needed immune booster shots every single day for six months, I had to do them because my, my dad was afraid uh, to, to do them for my mom. And my sisters either weren't home or, or didn't have the courage to do that either. So I had to give my mom an immune booster shot every single day. And after two surgeries and after six months of chemo, she um, was cured of cancer, quote unquote, because the cancer cells were below a certain count and she was in remission, which one would touch her heart more? The first post or the second post about the actual story? It's going to be the story. The story is going to put you yeah. in the, the first post is, is a good post, but the second story is going to, you're going to like me more as a person. And so I, I'm vulnerable. I'm putting my personal life out there. I, I'm genuine and I'm honest, and I'm not looking for attention there. I'm, I'm not just looking um, to use my mom to get business. I'm telling a story that really happened in my life and I'm choosing to share it. But being a storyteller will build you a lot more rapport. And so what I call this is, is rapid rapport. I, I teach people how to build rapid rapport 24 seven through Facebook. Okay. So some do's and don'ts, right? So, um, very overwhelming slide, but I, I'll, anyone who wants it, I can email it to them. Um, look, I'll be honest with you. I have made all the mistakes here. So I'm not trying to bash people that have made the mistakes. I've literally made every single mistake here. I've talked about politics. I've talked about religion. I've talked about controversial things. I was negative complaining about my day. Um, I, I used to curse a lot because I was in the military. I did, I did uh, spam and, and only post about business. Um, I never said anything negative about friends and family, but I, I have seen agents in the marketplace say that, um, they're frustrated with the buyer. I see it on actually LCA at also. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Yeah. But they, they say that, you know, this buyer's a, a, a tire kicker and they've shown 50 houses to them and won't they hurry up and just buy a house? Well, let me, let me, let me, um, let me ask you. Um, couldn't your competitor, even in, in uh, an agent group like LCA, take a snapshot out of that and show it to your potential clients in your marketplace? I'm, I'm just saying you should watch what you're posting. Right. So even though you think it's a safe place because it's just agents, your competitor in the marketplace may be there. Um, also, who wants to be your next client or your next <clears throat> victim if you're going to talk like that about them? Which even yeah. family member is going to support that post? Right. right? Um, don't like your own post. Now, I break that rule because my parents taught me to be superstitious. So if you have a Chinese Taiwanese friend, you know that um, the number four in Chinese is very closely related to the number four in Chinese. So death, death and four are about the same. So when uh, my post hits 74 likes, I will like it because my parents taught me to be um, superstitious. So I'll like it. And then Barry, if you or Tristan likes it, then I'll unlike it because I don't want to be that self-absorbed person that likes their own post. But I'm superstitious, so I don't want to have a post end in a four. So if you go back and you scroll back on my post, you may see st stuff that's like 175 likes It's because... My, my parents taught me you can't leave a four at the end. 
So I, I do break that rule. And there's actually yeah. a very smart strategy about that also. So Barry, I want you to do a test today. Go back to All some right. post you want to refresh inside Facebook. If you will like that post, it will refresh it inside Facebook. Also, if you make a fresh new comment, it'll refresh it inside Facebook, even if it's two years old. Watch how many new likes and comments you get on that post that was two years old. Okay, so that's a little trick that I teach also. Um, and then um, don't add someone and immediately ask them to like your business page. Well, Felix, how do I get likes on my business page? You don't, you don't, you let it happen organically, right? Because um, I teach the, to basically repurpose and repost all of your business stuff, like a story onto your, your business page once or twice a week. But, um, but let people find that organically and let them find it from maybe how you push it through your advertising. Don't ask your friends and family to like it because inevitably when you do what I teach you to do, you double post about it then. And, and so I don't, I don't look for that. I, I know a lot of uh, top teams around the nation that have 5,000, 10,000 likes on their business page and they get, they get very few transactions out of it. I know people that have 10,000 people in a, in a group, very much like lab code agents. Maybe it's a community page or maybe it's um, talking about a hobby like um, Harley Davidson riders of Atlanta, Georgia, for example. And if that were your group, I would say you're probably getting 10, 20, 30 deals out of that group of 10,000. Right. But again, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm bashing business pages specifically, not the other strategies on Facebook. You want to build rapport. One of the things I get most annoyed at is when people say that they're really good at Facebook, but they don't respond to comments. So Barry, you and I are, are having an interaction right now and you comment on my Facebook and I, I don't like and comment back. Literally, if I related that to a real life interaction, I walked out of the room. Yeah. Totally. And what I'm training you to do is never to like and comment on my stuff ever again. Right. And that drives the algorithm inside Facebook to push my stuff over and over and over again inside Facebook. So if you're not liking and commenting back on the, the comments that you get, you're destroying your social media and you're destroying the Facebook algorithm for yourself. Right. You that makes sense. You must be yourself. You know, if you're weird, I'm a little quirky. He, people who like me, like me. And people who don't like me, they don't like me. And I'm okay with that. Be okay. Stop trying to please everybody on your, your social media. I don't try to please everybody. I try to please most people. Yeah. <laughs> So most people is hard enough. I, I don't want to try to please everybody. That's impossible. And you want to interact with your audience. So here's, here's, a, here's a test and here's a homework assignment. If you were to go and like 100 different posts from 100 different people that could be your next client, watch how many more likes you get next week. So you must interact on their Facebook pages and their Facebook posts to get the, the, the likes back for you. So if you want to be more popular, you must like other people's stuff. Like, comment, like, comment, like, comment. You must decide in your privacy settings, but I think it's a joke. I think it's a joke. Look, I grew up in the 80s where, you know, D.A.R.E. was around and, and police officers came to your school every single year telling you not to talk to strangers, right? And I grew through the Craigslist killers and everything else and the things that get us worried about uh, online. But Gary, let me ask you, do you still sell real estate? Absolutely. You still take listings, right? Yeah. And I would guess that most of the agents watching this broadcast, they, they love listing. They love being a listing agent. They love pushing out their marketing. I would also guess that most of them have their cell phone number on their for sale signs. And I would guess that most of them have their cell phone number on their advertising. So that fake security that you have is literally fake. And, and here in California, your, your, um, your, Real estate license is, is attached to an address. And most people have that address attached to their personal house. If I really want to do some damage, there's already ways I could do damage to you without having to track you and stalk you on social media. Right? So I think that that is a cop out for not getting over the social media thing. Now, people can disagree with me. I think I'm going to get a firestorm of hate from that, but that's fine. That's fine. Stop putting it up there. Stop putting it up there. Change your address. Just protect yourself in all areas then right? Do the sprinkle technique. Actually, I said 80, 20, 90, 10 actually works better and take down any, any inappropriate pictures. I actually put some douchey pictures up like four and five years ago. I had to take down. So that, that's why I'm guilty of all of this stuff. Right? So let me, let me talk about politics and religion because I, I think that that's where people are most guilty. Um, I have a religion. I have a religion. 
sometimes people will guess my religion based upon some of my posts, but I don't really put it out there. I used to put it out there on a platform called myspace.com and friendster.com. And the, the comments that my friends made were, Felix, stop preaching to me. But I wasn't, but that's how they took it. I basically just had a scripture or something like that. And they said, stop, I, I don't like it. Okay. So it's not how you're trying to make it perceived. It's how your audience is perceiving it. So if, if that's your database and that's most of where your sphere of influence comes from, your place of worship, then keep doing what you're doing. If you're a small group leader and that's how you get your business, that's awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep posting about what you're doing on Saturdays and Sundays and volunteering. That's awesome. But if it's uh, not, then I'm going to say you can post about religion, but you must say something like this. Gary, I went to church on, I went to church on Sunday and, and my pastor had a great message and this is how I'm falling short in the eyes of God. If you internalize it and you take the hit for yourself, then your friends won't feel like you, you think you're better than them. And that's how the post sounds normally. And that's why people don't like when you talk about religion, either you're recruiting for your religion or you think you're better than everyone else. And they don't like those two things. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. It's not endearing, not approachable. No. And, and we're, we're uh, again, this is psychology. So politics, <laughs> let's say I love to talk about politics. Well, you can start a, a town hall in your town called uh and i'm going to put two two basically two uh examples out here to to uh satisfy both sides of the aisle here okay so i'm going to put um democrats in vegas and i would put uh, republicans in fresno okay so if, if that's your group then you can talk about what you want in that group and talk about politics and and let everyone find that group from your town and you can talk about politics and 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 love the president or bash the president all you want, and you can actually get business from that. Ta-da, now I solved your problem. You made a group, and now you, you, you took it from your main Facebook into a group. I still wouldn't do that because there's going to be someone in the group that then broadcasts that stuff out there. But if you really want to talk about politics, that's how you can make money talking about politics. You, you start a group with it that is closed or private. This is what we see. This is what we see on Facebook as, as good social media posts. So let me, let me tell you, again, Facebook doesn't like third-party links, so they don't like the company on the left, I'm not going to name, and they don't like the party on the right, which is a, a tour company or, or a photographer, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bash the right first, okay? So on the right, you spent 300 bucks on professional photography. Did you know that Facebook actually pixelizes and, and makes the third-party links look less beautiful because they don't want you to click on it? Test it out. Test it out. Test the link out versus testing out the actual high resolution pictures you pay $300 for. What you're gonna find is that if you upload the original pictures, you're gonna get more likes on it because remember when the business of, ch of, of chasing likes, but also it's gonna look better. It's actually gonna look better if you upload the original high resolution pictures. You're gonna get the, the max uh, resolution that Facebook will allow. Again, they, they will still optimize it. You're not, get, you're not gonna get the whole high def um, that you originally got, but you're going to get the highest possible if you upload the picture directly. And this is a big mistake that I see most agents make. First, you're sacrificing the likes. And second, your picture quality goes down. Okay, so what should you do? You should document the journey. We should learn from reality TV. So when you meet your clients, tell how you met your client without spammingly tagging them. No one wants to be tagged. If they tag themselves, let them tag themselves, but don't tag them without their permission. Who are you allowed to tag, Barry? Only your spouse. Only your spouse. That's it. <laughs> Nobody else. Okay? Um, I, I hate those vendors that tag me and, and 90 other people because Facebook only allows you to tag 99 people. It's very annoying. Mm -hmm. spamming. So stop the spamminess from your social media. When you get your offer accepted, tell them how you got your offer accepted. I brought cookies uh, to this agent and I presented my offer in person. So that's how I got my offer accepted for my clients. Whatever you did, you tell them in a story and in the home inspection, um, let them know the general gist of the home inspection. Don't give the address. Don't give the details. Don't go Facebook live. I, I had an agent at a major brokerage go Facebook live on one of my listings. I actually had them, to t I, I had to call their broker to take it down. You're stigmatizing the house without knowing it. So I had to actually call and take that down. So but that's a cool video you can do after the deal closes. So do the Facebook, uh, do the video during the home inspection and then show the behind the scenes after the deal closes. So are you showing the behind the scenes? 
the loan docs. Go to the, the, the signing and make fun of how your clients have signed three inches of paperwork and how they had to give a blood sample and, and how they had to give up their first and second board. You know, make fun of it, but also celebrate it at the same time. And at close of escrow or at the closing, you should have this picture on the right. And what I normally get is, Felix, what about the house? No one cares about the house. No one cares about the house. They care about the people. They care about smiles on their face and they care about it's a zoomed in picture. What you can do better is you can have a customized sign called sold by Barry instead of sold, right? But this is adequate. And I started this in 2015 before everyone else started doing it, right? It's a copy of cat business. So everyone now does this. Now I'll, I'll give you some more. You can document the journey by having that picture of the actual house and superimposing the word sold across it. Now the same client you posted six and eight times about the same exact client. And if you're a new agent, what do your friends think? Your friends think that you have eight clients. They don't actually know that it's the actual same couple that you talked about six, eight, nine weeks ago. They think it's, it's different people that you're helping and think, they think you're a rock star and perception is reality. So this is the right way to talk about your business. Not just listed, just hold open house one to four, come visit me. So let that sink in because yeah, that's pretty deep, man. It's really good though. Cause if you think about the stuff that enjoys that we enjoy is on social media, it is the story. Um, it's really good. And I, and I, you know, I'm thinking about this and reflecting back over the last few years. And I remember like, you know, I would just take pictures of parts of my day as an agent or whatever. And then I would walk into church and trying not to talk about business but people would come to me and be like, Hey man, uh, listen, got a real estate question. And like, you know, and so it, it basically got to the point where, um, I was a very large church's agent accidentally. Like I didn't, I didn't intend on it happening. You were attracting them instead of pushing them away with being salesy and spammy. So that's the difference right. is right. people want that effect where they walk into a large church and you get that, that crowd effect. Mm -hmm. But what they think needs to be done is they need, they think that they need to self promote themselves 24 seven. But what they really right. need to do is they need to be liked by a lot of people and trusted and, and they need to attract that attention. Right. Right. Yeah. We always called that like sideways Mac in high school. Like when you're trying to get a girl, like, you know, that's a bad illustration, but whatever. And, um, you know, you, you didn't go run to the girl. You just figured out a way to position yourself to where you were attractive. Um, so, and it's really what you're describing here. And, and candidly, it's some of the most compelling stuff I've heard on social media in a really long time. So this is, this is really, really good stuff. Um, I learned, learned a lot. Any, any more questions out there in, um, yeah, yeah. We got a few actually. I didn't want to interrupt you cause I've already done that like several times. Um, so one person is wondering, um, if you're at 5,000, uh, page or friends, is it better to turn your, your personal page into a page? No, no. So we talked about that at the beginning of the broadcast here. And, um, at the beginning of the broadcast, we, we said that example, we, I had a, a, a friend that was a local top producer. She maxed out at 5,000 friends and her millennial daughter told her to change it to a fan page, which is a right. option. Um, but I'm, I'm going to say that again, your, your friends and family and those people that follow you on social media, they don't want to be a fan. They want to be a friend. So when I asked her that question, do you want, do the people that follow you want to be a, a friend or a fan? She instantly got it and she did not change her page. Thank goodness. Okay. Thank goodness. Um, so also we have a question here. Please speak again about the quality of photos and sharing. So I don't share anything. So um, I don't, I don't want to say never share, but I seldomly share like the cute dog, the cute cat videos, the tasty recipe videos. I don't share that stuff because it doesn't get a lot of likes. So that's very much like a commercial or infomercial and you will kill your algorithm and you will kill your social media if that's all you do. If you look at millennials and there's all they do because they don't, they, they don't love Facebook. They like Facebook and they're only on Facebook to connect with older people, honestly, like their, their aunts, uncles, their parents, their grandparents. And they're on there for the Facebook groups. So if you want your business to be millennial based, I'm telling you, your millennial friends are probably not on the newsfeed as much as inside a specific Facebook group. Okay. 
So um, don't share ever. I don't even share from my business page. Don't share ever because, again, you're, people are afraid of me inside Orange County for recruiting. They won't say so, but they are. Um, because every time I post, I have the attention of thousands of people. Thousands of eyeballs are on my post every single time I post. And so th that's why I don't share stuff because every time I share something, I only get 10 or 15 team likes, even though my average is probably 150. Mm. Um, so that's very interesting. the quality of the photo does matter. It, it, now, as, as social media evolves, then even our Facebook posts will need to be Instagram quality. But right now, it's still, if, if you look at pictures from Facebook versus Instagram, Facebook's more raw, Facebook's more unedited, Facebook, they just don't look as good. But um, that's why I said, uh, Beth, that the, the photo can carry the picture. If you have an Instagram quality photo that really looks good, then that could carry the post because people will say, wow, that's aesthetically pleasing. Let me go ahead and just like that post. Right. It's the same as a beauty effect. If you are more attractive, you're, you're, it's still the same thing. People won't even read your post. They're just going to go ahead and like it and then keep on scrolling. So the quality of the photo will, uh, will help you to get more likes. Also, your copy will help you to get more likes. Let me, let me share this also. This is my friend Paige Nguyen. She is uh, in the Bay Area. And this is back in 2015 when no one did this. No one talked about the problems they solved in real estate. So I'm actually going to read this for emphasis. Buyers are coming soon in a few hours for their final walkthrough for my condo listing. Plumbers came and repaired issue per buyer's request. I come back to another issue. The bathtub decided to throw up. I called the plumber and since it to be dealt with later by the HOA, I had to take matters into my own hands due to the short amount of time. And let me tell you, it stank so bad. I gagged and almost cried. LOL. Glad everyone, especially my seller is happy and we're off the closing. And a lot of the agents will say, I wouldn't post something like that. And I would say, well, that's why you're probably not showing enough value. And so, uh, and, and so um, Paige did this back in 2015. I know she gets most of her business from social media. She is a millennial, so she gets it from Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And this is showing that you're a good problem solver. And unfortunately, most people won't show when they solve a problem inside a real estate transaction. And this is exactly what I teach my clients and my team members to do. And this is what I did with coaching, right? So if you're a broker owner, I'm going to say that you need to, you need to have great teaching and coaching content, but you also need to show how you've progressed someone's career. And so you see me doing a lot of testimonials like that also from my team members, from coaching clients, from offices that have me as a, a corporate trainer. This is how I've helped them. This is how I help their recruiting. This is how I help their agents progress but we must show when we solve problems and we must display them in this type of manner. It looks disgusting that, that, that tub. And, yeah. and, and this probably helps her to get a lot of clients. Yeah, this is, um, this is interesting, man. Uh, one, one more question. Uh, an individual said they like to game hunt, but they know hunting is um, offensive for some. Uh, do you have any advice as far as, you know, should they not post about that or any, any advice there? So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a very touchy subject. It, it really depends on your, your, your friends. So if your friends uh, and the makeup of your friends, if, if uh, most of them are okay with it, I'd say, okay, you can post it. I, I, I personally, my first reaction is don't. My first reaction is it's okay to say that you're going hunting, but don't talk, talk about big game hunting. Don't talk about, um, don't show the photos. I don't want to see the elk. I don't want to see the elephant. I don't want to see anything. So you can, you can, um, you can, you can be dressed up. You can, you can take a picture of your gun. Uh, and landscape I think photos. Landscape photos are cool uh, in the woods, right? Because I'm from, I'm ex-military. I still go to the gun range a lot. And a lot of people still are okay with me going to the gun range. I show pictures of guns on my Facebook. I show me actually shooting on Facebook Live at the gun range on Facebook. No one's ever had an issue with that personally, um, but I'm not, I'm not going hunting. So I, I think if you, yeah. you don't want them to connect that to a dead animal, and if you do, I, I think that's going to be a deterrent. I, I think that's more, I'm gonna tell that, I'm, I'm gonna say that you probably should move that into a Facebook group. Yeah. So if you move that that's into a Facebook group, and you're the admin of that group, 
even if, if you have a couple thousand hunters, you could build your business around the niche of just hunters in your area, potentially. Yeah, and it's just really looking at what you're posting from the people that are seeing it from their perspective and knowing what the end game is. Um, that's, that's a big takeaway for me. Um, and, um, you know, we're at the top of the hour. I know that um, I could probably just pull more out of you for another five hours. Um, you know, is there anything from a closing perspective, like, you know, when we're winding this down, like, if you were to say, like, are there, obviously, this entire session is so relevant, so needed, but are there some big idea things, and I'm sorry if I'm getting in the way, you probably were going to say this anyway, but some things that, like, those that are watching right now that maybe you really want to make sure that they remember um, to take home with them as far as their social media? I think it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay mm. to make mistakes. If you, you, you must test. So it, it's also uh, this, this current slide. So you, you must test your, what you think works. And if it doesn't get the lights, just delete it in a couple of days. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Who says that you must, yeah. you must have everything stay on your social media? You know, this is not like, like you're not LeBron James. And you're not, you don't get a lot of flack for deleting a tweet, right? If you delete a tweet and you're yeah. LeBron James, people think that there was something wrong with the post, right? So test, if it doesn't work, just delete it and move on. I, I was one of the pioneers on Facebook Live and Facebook still gives me some extra cool toys and apps because I was one of the pioneers on Facebook Live back in 20, I think 2016. Um, so I, I have like beta testing stuff on Facebook that other people don't get access to right away. But I remember my first few months on Facebook Live, I hated the expression that Facebook would have in the freeze frame right before they actually played the videos um, as you scroll down and that was enough for me to delete that broadcast. Right. Now, right. If I'm like, right. If it looks awkward, I don't care anymore, but it took me a while just to get over that fact or, or I didn't like how I stuttered. I didn't like what I said. I would just delete it. So be okay that you delete stuff that you don't like. It's, it's okay. It, it, it's really okay. Um, let me see if there's, so if you speak a different language, I would also post sometimes in that different language. I don't think that people really understand that you may speak a, sec a second language, right? Right. I speak Chinese not very well, but sometimes I'll post in Chinese and that'll confuse people because I really can't read or write Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I use Google Translate and because I know how to speak, I, I put the right thing in, in the play. Um, look, just stop spamming. Stop, stop spamming people because it doesn't work in the algorithm. So other spammy things are tagging people that, that uh, aren't part of the post. Um, and this happens, you know, people tag me for their, their uh, social media events. They tag me for their uh, real estate events because they, they think that they're going to then gain access to my followers somehow. And, and so that's very spammy. Stop doing that. Stop asking for business on, on Facebook. Um, Facebook groups is a great way. So if you're a millennial or you want millennial business, there's a lot of great local groups that you should be a part of. So um, there's, there's two strategies for Facebook groups I'll, I'll, probably, uh, I'll probably end with. And one is you can start your own Facebook group like I described. And it should be regional. Because Barry, what market are you in again? I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, 757. Okay, so, so you could yep. have um, like uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach, whatever the group, you know, uh, wh whatever someone would, would locally call that area, right? So I'm from Nova, right? So, so only Northern Virginians would know Nova, right? All or right. maybe people from Virginia, right? But yeah, I know that. But... You could do Nova hiking, right? So you have a geographical term and then you have the activity that you want. So Nova Chinese, so it could be a ethnic group, right? Or it could be an activity. So that's one way that you can then um, garner future business by, by cultivating your own group. The other way is being a member of another person's group. So you're sniping or, or you're, you're basically using what they built up to, to, uh, to gain business. And so, it could be that you are a Harley rider, and I'm, I'm going to use the example before, Harley riders of, or of ATL or Atlanta. So you could be in that group, and you could get known in that group, and the, the whole premise is, is don't talk about race, build a relationship with them about the commonality of being a Harley rider in that group, and you add them as friends on your personal Facebook. Every 10 posts, they see two that are business, and they will connect with you when they need real estate. So that is how it flows. 
So if you don't want to start a group, you don't have to, you can join. There's a lot of local groups like probably uh, Virginia Beach News or Virginia Beach Happenings, or you knew, you know you grew up in Hampton Roads if, you know you grew up in Norfolk if, you know you grew up in Virginia Beach if, and you join those groups and you talk about memories, you, just, you pour into the group, you post, you like and comment, and then you add the people onto your personal Facebook, and you're done. It's huge, man. Uh, I got some actionable ideas. Oh, cool. That's, okay. um, yeah, I feel like I just got a free coaching session. That was good. Honestly, I think, um, you know, if you'll uh, allow us, I think that, you know, I think giving everybody a few weeks to digest and implement and then maybe uh, doing a, um, you know, a second session on this, I think would be very valuable because I really don't think enough people are um, looking at their social media this way. And honestly, it's almost like sad because everybody's trying so hard and it's, it's repelling. It's not attracting. And I, I just, I see a lot of value in what you're teaching. And, um, and I honestly, man, I've learned a lot. Uh, appreciate your time today. I know LCA appreciates it. Um, you know, you talk about counting the likes and, you know, uh, between the, the watch party, the live and the group, you know, there was a steady audience of over 80 people just watching and it didn't change. They were glued in, they were listening. And uh, that's when you know, you've got that right message. So you're practicing what you're preaching, bro. And I appreciate it. Appreciate you and uh, uh, look forward to hearing from you again. Yeah. Thanks, Barry. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks, Felix. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.